Well, under pressure, honey. Do we admit what happened this morning? No. So this, <laughs> so this morning we had a great moment together. <laughs> I handled myself pretty good. <laughs> Only because I couldn't hear you from the other room. <laughs> So we were up till 3 o'clock working on this message because we like to do those kind of things. And uh, this morning, I went to hit print and nothing. So then I proceeded to get mad at the printer like it had something to do with it. And finally, we had to call Danielle and have it printed here because we were stressing out over laptops and how we were going to do that. Pressure, pressure, pressure. I'll tell you what, there's pressure all the time, isn't there, amen? There is. Well, we're in this this idea with ladies and pressure. And we've been talking a little bit about what it means to women in general, pressures of life. And then last week we talked about the pressures of motherhood. But today we're going to be addressing the pressures of wives. And so I'm going to try to talk less and let you talk more. I know that normally doesn't work that way. Since but you're not a wife. Yeah. <laughs> but let's just share with these guys for the next few minutes the pressures of a wife. Well, I, I wanted to kind of start off with a little humor because we have been talking about the pressures that we feel in those circumstances as a woman or as, um, as a mom. And with the wife, there's still the to-do to list, but I'm going to kind of add a little humor, so hopefully this isn't offensive. But um, first of all, our pressure is create a, a, a calm and peaceful home for our spouse. Be intimate. Keep a clean home, not messy, cluttered, stressful. Be intimate. Grocery shop, cook, make, cook healthy meals, clean the kitchen. Be intimate and initiate. Do the laundry, be intimate. Take care of the kids, be intimate. Stay attractive, be intimate. Help husbands reach their goals, be intimate. Prioritize what he has asked for, be intimate. Remember, initiate. Be supportive all of you that all he is doing, be intimate. <laughs> so I just. That sounds <laughs> like no pressure at all. <laughs> So we have all these things to do, but then there's this big, big thing that's really important to you men that well, we're, we're trying to make sure that we... That's the last thing we cover in this message, and we might <laughs> run out of time, so you might be safe. <laughs> the men won't appreciate that. <laughs> well, as you know, the theme of our series, the theme verses, Titus chapter 2 and verse 3 and 5, and it says this, Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanders or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good. And so train young women to love their husbands and children. Be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands. That the word of God may not be reviled. But before we discuss this, I, I really want to go back to the whole purpose of us having this series. And why does this really matter? As you know, our theme for this year was what does it mean to be a city on a hill? And so I want you ladies, as we're going through these things, to remember that the only reason we're having this conversation, because first and foremost, you are the light of the world. You are a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. And so when you think about that identity that sets the foundation for everything, it will help you grasp a little bit about what we're going to talk about you're not only that, but you're an ambassador to the lost. In other words, you're a picture of what it means to be this woman that God has designed you to be in, in the world of which is really contrary to who you are. Yeah, and I just think we want to remember that God's word is so rich with the principles um, about who we are. And I think we, we lose those um, as we listen to what the world has to say. So I want us to just remember that God's principles are not based on our feelings. They are not based on trends. They're not based on Facebook, uh, Facebook Instagram, TikTok, even Pinterest. Um, they're not based on the scripts from the popular show, The Bachelor, or even <laughs> Real Housewives of, I think there's Beverly Hills, New Jersey, Atlanta, New York, I mean, whatever state. They're not real. Housewives of ABT. Real Housewives of ABT. I think we'd be the top. Real Housewives yeah, of ABT. I like that. I like that. We're, yeah. I, we might have something there. Okay. But anyhow, um, those, those type of principles will fail you. And you don't recognize it, but they will. One show at a time, one pin at a time, one reel at a time, uh, one post at a time. They slowly erode who God says you are. And that's really what we want to focus on. Again, your identity, who you are. So social media is condemning. 
And it's a constant reinforcement that women are not enough, that what you do is not enough. Um, so we just want to, as we go through what God's word says about who we are, we want you to remember that God's word, it, it's timeless. Its principles are constant. They are not wavering. And so if we will take the time to focus on who God says we are, um, we will actually recognize that our value is in whose we are because we understand who we are, and that is we are women of God. So I just want to just really point that out as we begin to go into this series. Yeah, when we think about that, we think about when you know whose you are, we were using that word whose, who you belong yeah. to, you know why the why behind the what. When you know who you are, you know what to do. And when you know what to do, your pressure turns to your passion mm. because you do what you are created to do, what God has designed you to be. Creating this circle because once you do that, then you realize that you're living in such a way that is honoring to whose you are. And so I think that's really important yeah. for ladies to understand that. Now, ladies, if you're a believer today, we're going to have some, a, a good conversation. If you're a non-believer in the house today, lady, uh, ladies, if you're here, if there's a woman here that's not saved, some of this stuff is not probably going to apply to you, although I think it truly will be helpful for you in your marriage. Uh, but let's just think about this thing. Ladies, it's so important for you as a believer to realize that uh, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are this because you were bought with a price and you were created to glorify God in your body. Because God is who has purchased you and who you have been created in an identity with. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19 says this. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Whom you have from God, you are not your own. You are bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. Now, honey, how does knowing the whose, whose you are help you face the pressures of being a wife? Well, I, don't, I think we, we fail to think about how much identity drives our behavior. Identity drives our actions. Um, so if you have a healthy identity, it creates positive habits and positive habits feed your healthy identity. Um, so I'm gonna give you this, this illustration. If somebody walked up to me and said, would you like a cigarette? My answer would be, no, I don't smoke. If somebody had been a smoker and they answered, you know, would you like a smoke? Uh, no, I'm really trying to quit. They're not establishing their identity as I am not a smoker. They're saying I do smoke, but I'm trying not to do that. And so I, that's what I'm trying to say when you think about a healthy identity. Who are you in Jesus Christ? I am a daughter of the King of Kings. I act like that, I respond differently, I talk differently. I am created to be an image bearer of Jesus Christ. And when you think about that, you say, you know what, I will never find my identity in what the world has to say. I will never bow down to the idols. And we don't literally bow down, but we succumb to them when we succumb to the pressures of what they want us to be. And so we need to look at that and say, I will not. I will not believe what a man has said in relation to a man, a woman, you know, an airbrushed, filtered. I mean, I, there's a lot of things you can do to photos and everything all over social media. But you recognize that and say, that's not going to be who I am. I don't have to believe any of that because it's all lies. So I think also we can get down on ourselves. So regardless of how we feel about ourselves at times, we can say, you know what, I'm a daughter of the king and there is nothing out here that is going to change what I know to be true between my heavenly father and me. Um, and I think of 1 Peter 2, 9, because it says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And so I think truly, if we can keep our focus on that, even in our marriage, we will recognize, you know what, I'm an ambassador even in my own home. I am a city on a hill. I am the temple of God. The Holy Spirit dwells within me. And I remember the first time I grasped that concept. Like there is no longer a building, there's no longer a temple where the Holy Spirit would dwell. God has said, I have torn that, that is gone. I have done away with that. Now you will be 
my temple. The Holy Spirit will dwell inside of you. And that's so important to understand because with those truths saturating my heart, my habits change. They have to change because I recognize who I am. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit, as you were saying. So I reject the lies on TV. I reject the lies of social media or you know, video games, whatever you kind of maybe spend your time your time on. And that's, I think, really, really what we have to focus on is just identity, who. So yeah. that's kind of where. Well, not only that, I think that one of the things that when we think about being bought with a price, it also gives you this idea that you can do nothing apart from him. You know, Christ is the one who gives us the power. He is the one who gives us the ability to overcome. John 15, yeah. 5 says this, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm. Man, this is a powerful statement, honey. It, it, it really is the idea that these ladies who are under this pressure oftentimes try to do things on their own. So how can women take that principle and turn their pressure into a, a passion to serve Christ? Oh, well, I, I think if we would just really grasp that when we go about our day and we think of everything that is on our to-do list and um, how do we put emphasis on it and we stop and think, apart from Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, I, I really am just operating on my own strength. Um, so we can't truly, um, as you had read in Titus, I can't truly be loving, self-controlled, kind, or submissive in my own strength. I would like to try to be, but I, I probably fail at that a lot if I try on my own. Never. But we can't have, thanks, that was sweet. We can't have real joy or peace in any of our relationships if we are operating on our own strength. Now, it will be temporary. I, I will say it will be temporary. But when you try year in, year out to keep being loving, kind, as Titus tells us, it gets difficult. So I think we have to know, again, I'm going to keep emphasizing this, when we know whose we are and who we are, our negative self-perception we recognize will sabotage our success. So we have to have a complete change in our minds mentally that I am who I am because Jesus Christ is living in me and I can't do anything apart from him. So as I ask a lot of you women, and I appreciate all of you who have been a part of my little surveys um, and so many responded this time, but we admitted, a lot of us would say, that our perfection that we put upon ourselves is really self-made. Like we, we put so much pressure on ourselves to be everything to everybody, to get it all right. Um, we even mess up and other people not e maybe not even realize it, but we beat ourselves up about that. Um, we admit that the thoughts that spin on the hamster wheels of our mind are, are what destroying ourselves because we have not put in the thoughts of who God says that we are. So the thoughts that are running through our head is what we saw on Pinterest, what we saw on Facebook, what somebody said about us, a friend, a TV show, et cetera. And those little thoughts just spin like a hamster wheel in our mind. So we find that our own minds condemn us, which really ultimately is Satan. Satan is the one who condemns us because Romans 8, 1 says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So we have to recognize that apart from the Holy Spirit living within us, we can't do anything on our own. We can't do it for long and we won't be successful at it. We'll be doing it in our own strength. So I think probably most of the time, and, and I have to, uh, I'm going to 100% say, the times that my, Ron and I get into it the most are probably the days hey, don't tell them that. that we get into it. Oh, okay. You're perfect. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I might be. No, <laughs> uh, no, I am not. Amen. <laughs> but if we That's have, I keep to, telling myself that. If we have to be real and really honest, what we recognize is that when we go into our days without surrendering the day to the Lord, without yielding ourselves and saying, Lord, I need your help. I need time with you. I need to remember who you have created me to be. I need to reject the lies of the world. Um, when we go into those days. We, we fail, we fail miserably. We let people down, but we let them down because we are trying to do it in our own. And we didn't prioritize them and we didn't see them the way God wanted us to see them. And I saw a, a neat little thing and it says, life without God is like an unsharpened pencil. It has no point. 
And if we really thought about that, we really would recognize, wow, why do I even try to go into a day and not give it all to Jesus Christ? So I also want to bring up um, Galatians 5, 22 to 26. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Let me, let me just pause. Love, love. I won't say them quickly. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, uh, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. You can never do too much of these and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So I just, I just want, I, I started into it fast and I wanted to slow down because you know what? I'm guilty myself. I hear passages that I recognize and I'm like, yeah, 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 I heard that, got that. But what happens to us is those passages become less present in our lives because we didn't take time to actually really meditate on what it meant and ask God if the truth of those verses is really penetrating our lives, our heart, our actions. Um, so I just really want you to think about that. It's the fruit of the spirit. It doesn't say the fruits, it says the fruit. It means the Lord wants all of this to be a part of our lives as wives, um, as, as women in relationships. And so I think that sometimes we can just uh, like want to gloss over that, but truly think about what the fruit of the spirit is in, in our life. Um, I, I would also want to point out here is when a tree bears fruit, is it for the benefit of the tree or is the fruit that is on the tree for the benefit of those around it? It's the people that are around that get to enjoy the fruit. And that's what we want to be as wives. We want to bear fruit so that the people around us can thrive, can grow, can be nourished because we are abiding in Christ. We recognize nothing can be done apart from him. And we realize that our fruit that we are bearing actually nourishes the people around us. John 15, four says, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So again, it's the fruit of the spirit. And sometimes we can think, well, you know, I got six of the nine, so I'm doing pretty good. You know, I mean, like, can Lord, can we just kind of like pretend that the self-control one doesn't exist <laughs> or that really it wasn't that important, but no, we, the Lord is wanting all of them to be present and they will be present in a spirit filled um, wife, Christian, uh, Christian um, lady, uh, a coworker, who you are in Christ. And that's what is really important. So um, when we're seeking to be a wife that God has called us to be, I just want to emphasize again, the word of God has to be our standard and who he has called us to be as image bearers, as fruit bearers. Um, God's word isn't a suggestion. It is a blueprint that we are to follow. Um, so when we feel under pressure, if we would align ourselves and align our lives with what he has said, we recognize that a lot of those pressures are not what we build them up to be. Yeah. Well, when we think about this answering this question of who you are as a lady, and we start to get into now that you know who you are, you're supposed to be spirit-filled. Your, your, your goal is to be Christ-like. Now let's get into some of the things that the Bible kind of talks about roles and how, what do you do? Like, how do you yeah. play that out as a lady? And, and this is where it's going to get interesting, ladies. And so please, that's why I have my wife out here, because I think uh, it's interesting to go back in Scripture and actually look at what it means. What is your identity as a woman? And so let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to Genesis and just see why ladies uh, are here and what the purpose that they have is Genesis 2 and verse 18 says this, and the Lord God said, it is not good for man to, that he should be alone, which is awesome. All men said, thank you. Wow. <laughs> amen. I'm going to say amen if you're not going to. Okay, just making sure. I will make him a helper fit for him. And so I want to, let's just define this idea of helper, one who assists and serves another with what is needed. So think about this, from the beginning, women have been blessed to be man's helpmate. 
This was before the fall. This was not something that was a curse upon women. No, this is what God actually created you to be. God's perfect picture for you is to help a man in the endeavor. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a second. 1 Corinthians 11, 8 says, For man was not made for women, but women for man. Neither was man created for women, but women for man. Man, when we think from, they were not created from, they were created for Man, men, however, this is not a trump card, man, for you to say yes. Ugh. Okay, this is not an abusive statement. This is not something negative at all whatsoever. This word, verse is for your wife to help you on your mission to do the will of God. In the beginning, Adam was given Eve to help him accomplish the will of God. Sometimes men use this completely different. Why is this? Because this is about relationship and not about ruling men. It's important for you to understand that because both of you are made in the image of God. Yes, you have unique differences, the different roles, different strengths between them, but you are better because both of you exist. The reason why men, it said we needed women is because God knew we needed them because we couldn't do all we needed to do for him. Amen? And so this is why women are wonderful. They are fantastic. They are called to be our help mate in life. Men and women are different, but the difference don't, there's not a value scale based on difference. Women are not less or more based on their values. Again, they are image bearers. Man, we, men, must not put undue pressure on our wives to participate in things that are not for God's calling in your life, but are for, our, are for your own selfish desires. And I think that is really where women have a bad taste in their mouth about what it means to be a man's helpmate because men are not partnering with their wives to accomplish the will of God. So Crystal, how do women see the value of being a helpmate? How do, they, how do they put that into value? Because the world is so against that idea. It is. And that's where, you know, if we listen to what the world has to say, we, we bristle at that. We think, I don't want to help some man out. I've got my own goals. I've got my own agenda. I want to go my way. Um, he can figure out his life. And we can have that kind of attitude because that's what the world says. Or again, we can recognize who do we belong to? Our creator, our, our, our God, he created us. And he created us for a beautiful reason. And then we just can say, who, who are we? we? We're daughters of the king. So now what does he want us to do? And in Proverbs, I mean, we go to that. And I love that Amir referred to that because Proverbs 31 does tell us, like, this is what a helpmate looks like. And it's a wonderful thing. So I'm going to start in, in verse 10 because it says, an excellent wife who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. Now, I'm just telling you guys, when I look at that and I can think, you know what? This is what a helpmate does, and this is what God thinks about a helpmate. This isn't what the world is saying. I can reject that. But what are the timeless truths? What are the timeless principles that God's word says he wants from us? And that is, is to be a helpmate. And this is what he, he believes about a helpmate. Um, and I, that's a good thing. So if we're not careful, um, what we do in life is we reject the thoughts of being a helpmate and we fill our lives with so many other things that we think have value other than being a helpmate. And I was talking with a, a lady on um, a, a text. We were just talking about this because I phrase it. You get so many things going that you don't know what to do and you don't do any of them. And she said, her comment was, you are paralyzed. And I thought, that's what happens. When we don't stop and think about being a helpmate and put the value on that, that God puts on that, we think we need to do all these other things on the to-do list. And, and we end up not doing all of them or any of them. We become paralyzed and we don't do any of our roles well. And so I think it's really important to see the value that Proverbs puts on that um, and say, wow, this is, this is what God wants and says this is what a helpmate is. And I can say, I want to be that. 
So it's not a bad thing. Yeah, I know in our, in our relationship over time, that is something that has always been a struggle uh, for you to feel valued, like what, doing the things that Proverbs 31 talks about because you feel like, who is seeing this? Yeah. And, and I think men, we need to understand that, that this value of a, a fine wife, when you read these first three verses, I mean, she has incredible value to her husband. She brings strength, not stress. She brings blessing, not a cursing. I mean, so when you think about us as men and how we can help alleviate some of the pressures that women have about their value, it's our job to say, hey, this is important to us and this is what we really wanna see. Yeah, well, and when I think, when I struggle the most about that was when I valued what the world valued. And yeah. we, we talked about that and I just, I wanted to work, I wanted to be out because that's what the world said was valuable. And you know, you said, Crystal, that's not what I want for our home. And so when I brought my heart back in our home and I said, you know what, I will align my desires with what you are asking as my husband and what I really believe the Lord was wanting, um, I could actually then say, you know what, it is a great thing. And I'll tell you now that our children are grown, um, they love the Lord, they're serving the Lord, our, they're re raising our grandchildren to love and serve the Lord. I'm so glad I didn't believe the lies of the world that I had to go out and make a name for myself and be all that I thought I wanted to be. Um, and I said, this is what God wanted. So I think that's really important. So let me also just mention that a lot of women out here, maybe you're a first generation Christian Maybe you don't have, um, you've never even heard the concept of a Proverbs 31 woman, or one of the ladies mentioned, she said, I never had a role model for what a Proverbs 31 woman would look like. like how do you be a godly wife? How do you do this? And I just thought that is a lot of pressure on her because she wants to be, she doesn't know how to be. And so Proverbs 31 is just really, really great. And I don't know, do I have time to go into some of them or? I'll, I'll highlight. You, have, you, you're, you can be hustling. Okay, I'll hustle through a little bit. But I'm just going to kind of break it down like this. But Proverbs 31 says she's resourceful. And it talks about that in verses 13 and 14. Um, she is not lazy. And that is talked about in verses 15 through 19. Um, in verses 20 through 24, it talks about her generosity. And um, it, in verse 25, it says she is prepared. And I'm going to read this one. Strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come. Mm. Now, I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot of things happening in life right now that I'm not laughing about. Like, I don't think about you know, what's happening in our world and think, that's just funny. You know, I feel a little bit of pressure or think about things that are going on and think, oh, but you know what? When I come back to who God is, who he says I am, how he controls, my life when I surrender it to him, that I can't do anything apart from him. You know what? I can laugh at the time to come because I know who I belong to. And I know my God, my father is watching over me and he's taking care of me. And that's what the Proverbs 31 woman knows. She is um, strength and dignity are clothing and she laughs at the time to come. Um, in verses 26 through 27, it says she knows the word. And I think that's important in defining us as helpmates. Do we know the word of God so that we are a great helpmate to our spouse? Um, she teaches her children respect, and that's talked about in verses 28 and 29. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. And um, you know, when your kids are running around now and you think, oh, really, I will, when will they ever call me blessed? All I feel like I'm doing is cleaning you know, dirty rear ends and having to discipline. <laughs> but you know what, if you're faithful in that, if you do it as unto the Lord, one day they will, they will rise up and call you blessed. Um, and in verse 29, it says, many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Won't that be a wonderful thing to hear the Lord say to us? Like just let that sink in, that we would stand before our creator because we know whose we are and that he would say, many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Like let, let's write that on our mirror somewhere to remember and remind ourselves that this is what God values. Uh, she fears the Lord in verses 31, and, uh, sorry, excuse me, in verse 30, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And then she rests in her reward, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Yeah, this idea of helpmate, it changes the way people think about things, it changes the way women think about it. But let's go to the next tough topic and we'll go to the New Testament now and this one is, seems to be a battlefield. And so let's talk a little bit about what it means to be submissive. Submissive is a tough decision because honestly we struggle with this. It seems to be so negatively taken, but I want 
you to realize something as, as my wife shares this with you. Uh, women, this is not something that is supposed to be a negative. The idea of submission is supposed to be this beautiful picture of something. And, and when women forget that this calling is to be this picture of what it means to be between the Christ and the church, it, it becomes a negative. But truthfully, Christ meant it to be a positive. Ephesians 5.22 says, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Then in verse 24, it says this, now that as the church submits to Christ, so also should wives submit everything to their husbands. This picture of this submission is so the unsaved world would see what a Christian's character should be as they submit to the church. It's powerful of us to even think about. It is, and I think, um, I think what we don't realize is that um, I remember being young, and I, I don't know the context, but I remember my dad saying that a submissive woman is actually a stronger woman. And you know, you often don't think of that. Women here submissive and they think, oh, you just wanna treat me as a doormat, you just wanna tell me everything I do and I have to lay down my life and do everything you say. But it's, that's not the way it is. And I loved that my dad had given me that picture. He's like, Crystal, your submissiveness is actually strength. Because any woman can go out there and demand her own way. But when you lay down your life for another, when you say, I do not have to demand my own way, that actually shows so much more strength. And so I really appreciated that he taught me that um, at a young age so that that concept would not be a negative. Do you remember when we found your mom's Bible? <laughs> we so do. Ron's mom had passed away and um, I don't even remember what, how we found it. I don't know if it was given to us in a trunk or something of our possessions, but we were scrolling through it and we got to the Ephesians passage <laughs> And she literally had like scribbled it out, like told, took a pen and like just like maybe if she markered through it, it didn't apply to her. I, I don't know. I mean, and we can think that and we can try to pretend that that passage isn't there. But anyhow, we can also try to embrace it and say, you know what? It's a good thing. It's a good thing for us to not have to be so brash and brazen and, and want our own way. Um, Philippians 2, 3 through 5 says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. So submission is having the mind of Christ. And that's what you said, you know, it's, it's a picture of the church and Christ. And so try to see it as a strength, not as a weakness. And that when you do that, you are laying down your life for someone um, and you're counting them higher than yourself. And we do that with other people. Sometimes we just find it hard to do that with our own spouse um, that we would want to, to serve and love. So it's just a thought there. Yeah, the topic is difficult, obviously, because the culture is so against the idea. But in, in reality, when you actually look at a woman's pressures that she's facing and some of the things that she's doing, if that was her mindset in her picture, those pressures would turn to passions. And she would be driven to do that because what a calling that is. I mean, I, I have to admit, the calling that you have is incredible when it, when it comes to that. Obviously, men's job is to love the wife, and that is an incredible calling as well. And we're going to get into that in the next series. So just women, just so you know, we're going to have plenty of time to get on the men's case. But that is really, 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 really important for women to understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, respect for us is the, the Lord said, you know, women, men need to love and women need to respect. And I think, you know, men have this honor code. Men just understand. Um, but I, I'm just going to put down this plug out there. If you've never read the book, Love and Respect, I just want to encourage you to. It will transform your marriage. Um, it did for us. Uh, we, really fast, really fast. Okay. I have a second. If I we haven't told this story. We have the hardest point to talk about here. In just okay. Okay. I'll hurry then. So we're on this road trip. This book has just been released. Ron, I can't remember why we were in the car together, but I'm like reading this book. And finally he was just like, I'm done. Stop reading this book. And I'm like, I haven't even gotten to the good stuff yet. He's like, that's okay. You've lost me. I don't know. I don't want to hear it. Fast forward <laughs> to five years ago. So probably 10 years later, I read the book. I thought it was fascinating. Trying to apply some principles, trying, not perfect, but trying. So I, three years, four or five years ago at the most, Ron is out in Bristol Bay and he was like, Crystal, 
I just listened to the best book on audio. What, what was it, honey? <laughs> Love and respect. <laughs> He's like, I've listened to it four times. It is so good. <laughs> Great, honey. I tried to tell you that. We could have had 10 years of better marriage. <laughs> oh, that's why you don't admit the truth to your wife. No, it's okay. But it <laughs> It's a great, great book, <laughs> Love and Respect. If you get bogged down in the beginning where Ron was like, I can't oh, take it anymore. Yeah, skip the first couple. There, it does. It gets a little bit repetitive, but get to the part where it says, men, this is how you love. Women, this is how you respect. It will do so much for you to bring clarity in a lot of areas. So, uh, sorry, that was uh, totally off topic. So, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> that was, we should just end there. That was, <laughs> that was good. Well, this last topic obviously is always a contentious place where women feel a lot of pressure. This life that, of selflessness. That, wait, wait, that part that was like be intimate in between every one of those things yeah. I mentioned in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. We're going okay. to just talk, talk about, about that. that a little bit and hopefully the crowd won't get too uncomfortable as we talk. But when we think about pressure, and what does the Bible say about this intimacy, this idea of your body and, and sex inside of marriage? Obviously, one person is, seems to be more driven than the other, but not all the time. Uh, but this is a p p picture of submission and love for one another. This picture is about unity. And 1 Corinthians kind of addresses it in verse, chapter 7 and verse 3. And let's just read some of this because I truly believe this would help ladies in the idea of pressure. It says this, husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights. And likewise, the wife to her husband, for the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. <clears throat> Verse 5 says this, do not deprive one another, except perhaps in agreement for a limited time that you may devote yourselves to prayer, but then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Honey, sex is a difficult topic when it comes to these pressures that women Face. So what are ways women can see sex in a little different way so that they might not feel the pressure so much in their minds of what that really is? Because that's a, that's a tough one. Yeah. Well, first I want to say that Satan is the enemy when it comes to sex. And we know that because all we have to do is look around at our world and see what media puts out there in, in relationship to what they want you to think about sex, pornography, everything that is just so rampant. So Satan has taken something that God meant to be so incredibly beautiful. Like this is a picture of the intimacy of the Trinity, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, that oneness that is so amazing that we really can't wrap our minds around how it really is. And he said, but I want to create that for a husband and a wife. And I, I think that if we would recognize that Satan is doing everything he can to steal that. So think about this. Um, before you get married, there is so much pressure to have sex because Satan knows it creates guilt and he wants you to feel guilty. Once you get married, Satan does everything he can to get you to not have sex. And you're like, how did that work? How did this, like before we got married, I was like, oh my goodness, like self-control is not there. This is getting really hard. Mom and dad, we want to get married. Okay, June? Nope, December. Really? December? <laughs> <laughs> yep, mom and dad, we're, we want to get married in December. Well, June would be a better time. Nope, we're not going to make it till <laughs> June. December. Then we get married and you're just like, sex tonight? Like we just did that this morning. Like again? I mean, and, and I'm just being real with you. And just trying to make you help yes, you. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, once you get married, Satan does everything he can to get you to not have sex because he knows it creates that intimacy and he doesn't want that in your marriage. And so we need to recognize that Satan is the enemy of our souls when it comes to sex. And so what God is saying here is so important and we need to recognize our enemy. I think another thing that we have to remember is when we stood at the altar together, we agreed that we would be one flesh, that we agreed that we would be each other's sexual partners. And that meant, women, that men said 
I am entrusting my whole sexual being to you. I will not have another. I will look to you to be satisfied in this area of life. And when we choose not to steward that well, it can lead to him feeling pressure and the struggle to not be a part of pornography or something else. Now listen, I understand that men have to control themselves. 100% they do. But we have the opportunity, and I, I brought this here because I, I wanted to maybe even use this as an illustration. I have a glass of water here, and it is life-giving, and it is mine to hold on to. And if my husband said, hey, I'm, I would really like some water, and I said, uh, mm, mm, no, not today. And the next day, honey, I, I really would like some water. And I kept just day after day saying, no, no. Do you understand the pressure that that puts on a man? Do you understand that you have the ability to be a refreshment to him? Everything that a man would want to do outside of having intimate relationship with you is not acceptable. Hiring a prostitute is not acceptable. Pornography is not acceptable. All of those things are damaging and destroying. And so for you to say, you know what? I have the ability to bless my husband. I have the ability to refresh his soul, to nourish his being, to be the one that he comes to for life-giving water, for life-giving intimacy. And you would choose that. That is where you can see being intimate with your spouse in a whole different light. And you can steward that sexuality um, well. So. I think what we have to recognize when we think about sex and wanting to meet each other's sexual needs is pleasing others and doing more for others, if it compromises what we can have together as a husband and wife relationship, we are creating more pressure. We, and we do that especially when we get children. When we have our children, we think, you know what? You are big enough to fix your own dinner. And these little ones, they cannot do that. Fix your own dinner. Or we think, oh, we need to bathe them and take care of them and, and all the things that we have to do with them. And we look at you and we think, you fend for yourself. But that's not what we are called to do. We are called to recognize the needs of our spouse, and we are called to honor each other with that. And, and I believe 100% that men can come alongside and say, honey, what can I do to help so that you can feel refreshed for this evening? Like, amazing, ding, 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 men, <laughs> are you catching this? Honey, I would love to get the kids into bed for you. Why don't you go in, have a few minutes to yourself, get ready for this evening, and I will take care of putting the kids to bed. That would be amazing. I hope men heard that. <laughs> I'll put that plug out there because I think all the women are saying, that would be amazing if my husband said, I'll take care of bathing the kids or I'll do the dishes. And you go upstairs and get yourself ready for tonight. Thanks for creating saying. the tension for the next series that we're doing. <laughs> For all the ladies in the house, I think we'll have plenty of men <laughs> present. <laughs> you will go to church. No. Yeah. So anyhow, I just, I want to say that we put a lot of pressures on our life, but our undue pressure, and if we will align ourselves with what the word of the Lord says in every area, it will make a big difference, especially in the area of sexuality. Well, thank you for sharing. All the men said amen, but don't say it out loud. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Guys, listen. Uh, ladies, when we think about closing this series up and we just think about the pressures that you face and asking yourself the real tough question, are the pressures that you're facing coming because you're believing a different identity about yourself? You're allowing yourself not to fall in what God has called you to do, what God's identity is for you. Have, are you finding yourself distracted because you're doing other things that I truly believe God will really bring a blessing to your life? You know, thinking about whose you are, whose are you? 
and thinking about who you are and thinking about what you've been called to be, this helpmate, this person who lives a submissive life as this picture for the world, this idea of selflessness in the world of sex and intimacy. And that goes for men, by the way, and women. Do you understand the importance of what this means? Ladies, I hope this series was helpful to you. I hope that you'll dive deeper into the word yourselves and start to learn. Find an older woman who you can share with and talk with so that you can learn some of the things uh, that we've talked about because there is no greater way. It is all obviously much more difficult for a man to get up and preach these kind of things and speak these kind of things into you uh, and for you to hear. But listen, the Bible's very clear like we have shared about this series. The older ladies in the house, it's time for you to step up and start pouring into the lives of our younger women who are brought up in a culture and a society saying the exact opposite of everything the Word of God says. Yeah. And so I just wanna challenge you with that. And I also want you just to understand something that without Christ, none of this really works. And so if you're here today and, and you've never given your life to Christ, you don't know Christ as your personal savior, you, ha you haven't put your faith and even know who you are in him. I would encourage you today in just a minute when we have prayer time to come forward and talk to one of our pastors and say, listen, I need Jesus. I need to know who I belong to and whose I am because that brings identity and joy and peace in my heart, that hole that no man can fill. Only God can fill that hole in your heart, ladies. Men, the same thing is true for us. No women can fill that hole in our heart, only Christ. And so in just a minute when we have prayer time, I hope that you will consider coming forward and giving your life to Christ. Hey everybody, Pastor Ron here. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Here at ABT, we make a big deal about following Jesus. Make sure that you subscribe and hit our notification bell so that you don't miss any of our upcoming video content. Also, if you'd like to support this ministry, please click donate now. Thanks for watching.